Good morning. Welcome to St. Lawrence O'Toole, the celebration of the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Times. My name is Jim Peck and I will be the lector for this Mass. The celebrant is Father Tom, and the Mass is being offered for Antoinette and Joseph Lamana. Please see the bulletin for announcements. Please turn off all cell phones and electronic equipment before the Mass begins. Thank you. Our entrance antiphon, let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength, constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord be with you. Good morning. We don't have our choir with us this morning. That's why we read the entrance antiphon. We don't have our choir because one of our choir members was positive for COVID last Sunday, so it's bound to happen. Um, so Father Rich and everyone we checked, we followed all the protocols, et cetera. So they're, they're being careful. Uh, they're quite sure it didn't go beyond uh, members of the choir. So um, there's pretty sure nobody else has tested positive. Um, you know, so that's why we don't have music, just taking, just taking that extra precaution, okay. But uh, otherwise, in the individual is, is fine, so um, bound to happen, anyway. So we just pray, pray for them. We won't, we won't be able to worship with the usual wonderful accompaniment that we have, but we'll, we'll worship nonetheless, okay. So as we always do, we place ourselves in the presence of our Lord and Savior. We come together to acknowledge, first of all, our sinfulness and to ask God's grace and healing. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We will have Kids Chapel, so if, if our all-stars want to come down. All right. 
And I'm going to take advantage to congratulate uh, Religious Ed is starting this week, so we have congratulations to all of our Religious Ed kids out there, our Edge kids who are here today, all right? Moms and dads who are going to really work hard to make, <laughs> to make this work as we begin virtual Religious Ed this week. Great to see all you guys. Okay. All right. Can I have everybody's eyes up here for a second? And can you make the sign of the cross with me when I give you the blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Amen. All right. All right. See you later, guys. Come on down. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourself in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong, wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him.
and low on, you know, maybe we're checking the scorecard off, but we're still failing because we're very gossipy and we're very negative and we're very judgmental and we're really failing in charity, right? So, two extremes. And the truth of the matter is that our Lord, and this is where we come back to the gospel, the truth is not to be found in either of, really, of those extremes. Jesus says, yes, the greatest commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. The second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these. The whole law and the prophets depend on these. It's not an either-or proposition. Jesus says elsewhere, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. I didn't come to bring the world uh, simply a message of be nice to each other. I came to show the world how to seek the truth and live the truth, the fullness of the truth. It's not an either-or proposition. It's not rules or love. It's not be a rules Catholic or a, a love Catholic or a peace and justice Catholic. It's, it's both. Because I love then I strive to live the truth, and I strive to live what God's commands ask of me. And it's from that point of view, not, not simply trying to white-knuckle it and obey all the laws and, and, and this, this tremendous sense of obligation. It's not this kind of loosey-goosey, well, you know, all you got to do is be nice. The attitude we want to have is, because I love God and because I'm alive with love for our Lord, and hopefully because I actually, I've had this personal experience of Jesus, now I want to know what the fullness of the truth is. I want to know what the truth is. I want to know that truth. Even if the truth is hard. Even if the truth is hard. I'll never forget this wonderful couple, first couple I ever married. I was directing their pre-cana, and the gal, we'll call her Janet. Janet had had a real, <laughs> a real interesting journey through life and was not, had not, never was baptized as a child. And she was searching. Oh boy, was she searching. She was searching for truth. And she, just so beautiful. She ended up getting baptized in some Baptist church down in Manhattan. She worked in, she worked in Manhattan. She worked for a software company. And finally she ends up at Pre-Cana with this wonderful Catholic guy who was on his own journey, his kind of, kind of reconversion back to the faith. And, and it was one, so, such a blessing to accompany them. But, so we got to Pre-Cana, and now we got to the talk at Pre-Cana. We had this wonderful couple that did it, but basically kind of talking about the church's teaching on sexual morality and that whole thing. And I was kind of like, oh boy, I wonder how this is going to go, you know. You know, is she going what, what is, to, what is she going to think? Everything was going swell up until now, you know, but gosh, what's she going to think of this? And, but the couple did it so beautifully because they incorporated what the church, uh, the, the, the approach of Pope St. John Paul II, whose feast day we celebrated last week, the theology of the body, beautiful, beautiful messaging, beautiful messaging, beautiful way to explain the truth, these moral truths. So they did a wonderful job, but still I was nervous. So we broke for the coffee break, and I went up to Janet. I said, Janet, what'd you think? What'd you think? You know, I thought, yeah, she, you know, she's going to be like, oh, this is great, but now we got into all the rules and rules about this and rules about the bedroom. And, you know. and she looked at me, and she said, Father Tom, that was beautiful. It's the truth. And she was just bowled over because the truth, the truth touched her heart. And because she was hungry for the truth, even though some of those teachings are difficult, and boy, are they di <laughs> to say they're difficult is an understatement, and are they contrary to the, the whole flow of our, of our culture in its sexual habits and everything? Yeah, it is. 
but she was ready to embrace that. Father, it was beautiful. It's the truth. And she was touched very deeply by the truth. The truth of the matter, that's what we have to be hungry for, even when those truths are difficult. And, and by the way, in the church, remember, we got to distinguish between the truth, the, the, the truth of the teaching, and the teachers, okay? The teachers can be real stinkers sometimes. It's the teaching that, that we want, that's what we want to strive for, to seek, to understand. Love, so love, loving God, should move us not just to be kind, but to seek the truth. I want to understand the truth. And even when these teachings challenge me and they challenge my, my situation and they challenge me in my family and they challenge me in my relationships, I still I want to understand that. And that's when we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit to understand that truth. Let's just ask for that grace. Ask for that grace to be, to be open to that truth, to live these great commandments in all of their specificity, right? Moral norms. I don't like using the word rules anyway when I teach moral theology. I we talk about moral norms. Do we need moral norms? Yeah, we do. Right? It's just like when you go hiking. We got any hikers out there? Okay, if you go on the Appalachian Trail, you want to know where those Appalachian Trail is one, one white slash on the tree, right? Or if you're on some other trail, it might be uh, a red medallion or, you know, the trail markers. You want to know where the trail markers are. That's what moral norms are, right? And yes, out of love, I want to follow those. I want to follow where the Holy Spirit is leading us. He leads us to the fullness of life, the fullness of joy, the fullness of happiness when we embrace the church's moral teaching without fear, but with trust. Let's ask for that grace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we place our trust in God's love and his mercy, and we ask him to hear our prayers. We pray for our country and its leaders, may the Holy Spirit, Give them wisdom and a spirit of selflessness and service as they make decisions for the common good of all, we pray to the Lord. That all Catholics will approach this election committed to voting according to Catholic values with a properly formed conscience, we pray to the Lord. That all the members of our families who are away from the faith return to the Lord and rediscover the love of Jesus we pray to the Lord. For those who have lost heart and struggle with discouragement or hopelessness, that they may find in the gospel new hope and among us Christians, brothers and sisters who will walk with them, we pray to the Lord. 
pray for all those who have died, and especially for Antoinette and Joseph Lamana, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you invite us to trust. You always help us to remain in that trust. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread. We offer fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we pray, look on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by sending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zan in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter into my room. I'm going to say the word in my soul. This Sunday, we just wanted to take advantage right before communion to remind um, everyone about um, how we're doing this in the age of COVID. So if you could, well, first of all, as always, if we're not ready to receive Holy Communion today, you can always come up, give us that gesture, and Deacon and I will be happy to give you a blessing, okay? Um, if you're wearing a mask, if you could just remember to lower the mask 
before you receive Jesus so that you can put our Lord right into your mouth without having to finagle with we've had some people trying to put the host right through the mask and remembering the mask is on we've had some people dropping the consecrated host so if you can just remember just right before you come up mask down receive okay anything else <laughs> thank you
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't forget to pick up, I think you already know this, but today's pickup day for religious ed materials, which is all out, out there, so don't forget to do that. Um, Starting November 4th, we'll have Mass on Wednesday evenings only, rather than Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Wednesday evening Mass starting November 4th at 7 p.m., preceded by uh, confessions from 6 to 7. So another hour of confessions available, in addition to Mondays, tomorrow from 4 to 7, uh, as we usually do. Uh, the Knights of Columbus uh, are doing a membership drive this weekend. You'll see them out in the lobby in front, in front of church. Uh, open house on October 26th at 7 p.m. On Saturday, November 7th, we will host again the very popular Jesus Retreat. Now this is great, again, for anyone still kind of under the, you know, the idea that this is just about following rules, okay? The rules only make sense, really, when we have a relationship with Jesus. We have a relationship with Jesus, and guess what? <laughs> All of those moral rules start to make sense. So, great opportunity um, on Saturday, November 7th. Beautiful retreat experience here, available to anyone who wants to participate, to really engage, right? to, to strike up, to, to um, uh, fan the flame of love for Jesus at this retreat. Okay, there's more information on that in the bulletin as well, I'm sure. We'll ha offer Mass at St. Lawrence Cemetery on All Souls Day, November 2nd at 4 p.m. for All Souls Day to pray for our deceased friends and relatives and especially those buried at the seminary. And then just again an appeal, St. Anthony of Padua Parish in the Bronx, Sister Parish to us. They've invited us to help them with Thanksgiving dinner for uh, there are three local Bronx homeless shelters. Um, we're inviting parishioners to join in and go to the Bronx that day. Uh, give it some thought and prayer. You can sign up um, to donate as well or volunteer at stlawrenceotoolorg slash thanksgiving. Let's continue to ask our Lord's special protection on our country and on our church as we pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.